The first step then is to set up our base framework. And as we've already mentioned, we're going to be using Slim. So Slim is a very light framework and it's very easy to work with. If you've never worked with a framework before, don't let this put you off. We're gonna be installing it, setting up a very basic project structure, and we'll be ready to start writing some code. So if you head over to the Slim GitHub page, we're not gonna be using version two, we're actually going to be using version three, which at the time of recording is a release candidate. So if we just scroll down here, we can see that we can install this using Composer. Now, if you've not worked with Composer before, you can grab this from getcomposer.org. You just need to follow the download instructions. And once you have it downloaded, you can either run it globally like this, or if you've downloaded the PHAR file, you can run it using PHP. So you just run PHP composer.phar and then any of the commands that we're going to be working with and you'll need that file within the directory that you're working on as well. So if you don't already have a terminal up and running, make sure you have one open and you're within the directory that we're working in. We just have an empty directory here at the moment. So let's go ahead and install Slim then. We know that we do this with Composer. We just run this command here. So this is the vendor name, this is the package name, and then this is the version. So we just paste this into here and we wait for that to download. Now that that's downloaded, if we just head over to the directory we're working in, you can see that we've got a composer file. This just lists our dependencies and we have this vendor folder, which contains all of our dependencies. And we can load all of these in with this auto load file. So a good project structure always separates its public assets from its private assets. And by that, I mean, we're going to create a public folder in which our web directory will point towards a user will land there and that will contain things like our index.php file, which will start up our application. And it will also contain things like the CSS, JavaScript, images, anything like that. So let's create this folder now. We're not going to do too much in here at the moment, but we know that we can uh, point ourselves towards this. So over in our browser, if we just hit enter on here, we go over to public. So this is the directory we're going to be working with. So now we're going to create a folder for our private assets, which is app. Now this is going to contain our bootstrap file. It's going to contain our roots. And we're going to be creating a couple of other folders along the way as well for things like our views and also our configuration as well. And remember, because we're pointing to the public directory, no one can even browse these files. So now let's create a bootstrap file. This is going to be a PHP file within this app directory. And all this is going to do is require in our composer dependencies. So let's require these in. All we do is go back into vendor and we pull in autoload.php. And in here, we're gonna set slim up and then inside of an index file in public, we're gonna run the app. And if this doesn't make too much sense at the moment, it will become very clear soon. So over in our bootstrap file then, we want to create a new app instance. So we're gonna assign slim app to this app variable just here. So now inside of our public directory, we're gonna create an index file, so index.php, and we're going to require in that bootstrap file. And then we're going to run our app. And this might seem a little bit silly, but what's happening here is the user lands inside of public. We require in everything in Bootstrap. This basically boots up our application, adds things to the container, which we're gonna be getting to a bit later. And then we run our app, finally. Nothing else will go in this file, so it's nice and tidy. So now inside of Bootstrap, we have our app instance. Let's create our first route, just so we can test that this works. And then we're going to look at an issue with any other root names, whereby we need an HT access file, which will root, root all requests to our index.php file. So inside of app, I'm going to create a new file. And this is roots.php. And what we can do now is require this in here within our bootstrap file. And now we can create any roots we want inside of here. So let's create an example one. 
we're going to say app get forward slash. That will just be as the user lands on public. We then have our closure here. We have a request, response, and any arguments from within the URL. We'll look at these a bit later. So I'm just going to echo out home. And now when we head over to here, we see home because we're on the forward slash URL, which is picked up by this route. Now, if we were to say forward slash home and we head over to forward slash home, you can see we get not found. That's because it's looking for a home directory. What we want to do is create an HT access file, which will route anything after this URL into index.php. And that will then get picked up when we run our app, because obviously in our roots file, we're defining roots. In Bootstrap, we're loading uh, Slim up and we're including our roots. Now, if you're using a web server other than Apache, this will be a little bit different. You'll need to set up your Nginx config, but you can find out how to do this on the Slim documentation. So I'm going to create a new file in public, assuming we're running Apache, which I currently am. And we're going to create an HT access file. So inside of here, you're going to want to place this code just here. So all this is really doing is turning our rewrite engine on and it's routing all requests through to index.php. So it will route forward slash home to index.php. Remember inside of index, we're requiring in bootstrap that will then create a new app instance. We can uh, define our routes in here, which we've done here, and then we'll run the app. So now if we head over to here, you see that it works in exactly the same way. So this might seem a little bit confusing and you might be thinking, well, why are we separating out all these files? What is going on? Well, this is going to set us up nicely to be able to just create our routes in here under any URL that we need and everything will just work. We don't need to keep setting up this application structure. It's just there for us now. We can write any code within here for each of the URLs. And of course, at some point we will be posting to a route, in which case we can pick that up just as easily. So now we've done this, we're going to go a little bit further and we're going to set up configuration because what we're going to be doing along the way is inside of our bootstrap file, we're going to be adding items to Slim's container. Now that might be a new concept, but it's essentially just adding things in that we can then use within roots, like our database connection or using views or flashing messages to be displayed to the user. So let's go over to the next video where we're going to look at setting up configuration.